In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Today we celebrate the three hierarchs. Of course, there are more than three hierarchs. But these three, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, are held up by the church as, in many ways, the three greatest examples of what a hierarch is. These three men were tremendous preachers, thinkers, theologians, uh, and they all were contemporaries of one another in the early 4th century, throughout the 4th century, I'd say. John Chrysostom was the youngest of the three. Basil the Great and Gregory were, were friends growing up. They were friends throughout their education, and uh, we actually have letters that they wrote to one another uh, about their relationship and their friendship, and we see a glimpse into uh, what they shared together. But when we think about these three, there's so much that we can say about these three. So please bear with me as I try to touch on a couple different, different angles of this. The first is that this is a feast, this is a joint feast uh, of all three packed into one. Of course, they, they each have their own separate and individual feast day. But as it so happened, as, as we, we like to do, sometimes we, we as humans, we have favorites. And even among the saints, sometimes people act in a way and, and give a devotion to one saint at the expense of another. And so it happened that these three, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, were, they've always been so heavily revered by the Christian church, but there were almost like factions within the church of saying, oh, you know, I'm a Basilite, Basil is my man. And then other people would say, no, I'm a Chrysostomian or something. Uh, and it actually happened that there were divisions in the church that were being caused by some people touting one of these three as being greater than the rest and placing him above the other saints. And as we know, throughout Christ's words and the writings of the scriptures, there is no real ranking among people. God loves everyone equally. And of course, the same is with his saints. And so to heal the, the factions and the divisions that were developing in the church, uh, the, the, the bishops of the church decided, let's not do this. <laughs> let's keep their individual feast days, but we're also going to put them together on one day to communicate to everyone that there's unity in these three. These three bishops of the church they didn't, in their words or their actions or their ministry, create division in the church. So God forbid we create division in the church in their memory, in keeping and honoring their memory. So the church puts, puts them together on this day, January 30th, to show their unity of the three. Of course, in orthodoxy, we love the unity of three, three in one, right? The hierarchs and, of course, as a model of the Holy Trinity, but I will say, I'd like to say just a word about the epistle reading today and another epistle reading. As I like to say, maybe too frequently, the scripture readings that are chosen for the saints are intentional. And they're done to highlight or to pull out some aspect of the saint's life that ties into scripture. To show the continuity between the scriptures and the lives of God's holy people. And so... The epistle reading today that we read, St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, talks about sacrifice. Why does it talk about sacrifice? Because the role of a priest, which specifically a hierarch is a priest, a bishop is a priest, the role of the priest is to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people. This has been the case all the way through the Old Testament, through God's covenant with Abraham and the Levitical priesthood throughout all of Judaic history, the priesthood were the people who offered sacrifices. Sacrifices were offered for a number of reasons, not just for the forgiveness of sins, but for lots of other reasons. The forgiveness of sins being one of them that's perhaps given the most attention in the Christian life and in, throughout the scriptures. But there were many others. But so the, 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 this passage about 
that St. Paul writes to the Hebrews talks about Christ as being the great high priest who offered the sacrifice of himself once and for all for the sins of everyone. And it talks about how he draws a parallel of Christ in his sacrifice of himself being the fulfillment of the Old Testament sacrifice, sacrificial practices that the priest would take part of in going into the temple, Christ going to his passion. You can see the parallels between these. And so the role of a priest, the role of a hierarch, is to offer sacrifices. And so these three hierarchs that we celebrate today live their lives in accordance with the model that Christ has set forth as a priest to offer sacrifices and to do so faithfully and with love. The church could have chosen a number of epistle readings for these saints because, as we said, they're such a beautiful example for us and a model for us of the Christian life. And this epistle reading, today's, was chosen as they are hierarchs, right? But, of course, this, when I think about the three hierarchs and I think about the division that was spreading in the church and the reason why they were put together on this feast day, I'm always reminded of, of Paul's letter when he talks about how there were factions developing in the Christian communities that he started. And people would say, I belong to, Paul, uh, to Apollos or I belong to so-and-so. And they'd say, oh, you know, th- this disciple baptized me, so I'm a, I'm a Pavlovian, right? And so there was the similar type of division among the church, even in St. Paul's days in the first century when he was spreading the church. And so that epistle reading could have been used for these saints to show that aspect of this. But I only say that to bring in this other reading just to highlight again the fact that there's such a beautiful continuity throughout the Christian message, throughout God's revelation to the world, throughout the whole Old Testament, his covenant with the people, the role of the priests, up until Christ himself in his sacrifice followed through with his holy ones who continued to live out the priesthood as a sacrifice of ourselves in the ways that we can, both for the actual priests of the church and for the people of the church doing the same. And also that word of caution to us that as we learn more about the church, as we, as we belong to maybe a particular part of the church that comes from a particular part of the world, may we never bring division into the church. May we never bring division into the church at large or the church in our community. We've seen, I've talked today about two different examples of these factions developing, and thank God the church has prevailed and unity has prevailed, but may we always be conscious of that and be filled with openness, filled with love, and workers of unity, unity and not division, to participate in Christ's sacrifice, his message of love and unity, and to share in that same promise that's offered to all of his holy ones, to be one, for us to be God's people and for him to be our God. May we have the prayers of the holy hierarchs, Basil the great Gregory the theologian, and John Chrysostom with us today and always.